All right, good morning, and thank you for turning, tuning in to the pre-market pulse scan. Uh, the time is around uh, 7.26 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today is Wednesday, June the 7th, 2017. All right, so the first things first, uh, the bond futures in the overnight. We're at 154.30 on the long bond, only down 132nd. And as long as we stay above that 153 um, momentum line, like I told you, no rate hike in the foreseeable future. The Dow is unchanged at 21,156. The NASDAQ 100 is at 58, 68 and three quarters, up five and a half points. E-mini S&P 500 is up three quarters of a point at 2431 half. Nikkei up 30 at 19,995. It did break 20, broke that 20,000. And that is a big time red alert sign that these markets are ready to go much, much higher. Crude oil still waffling around, just chop, chop, 47.85 down 32 and a half cents and the US dollar has come roaring back it's at uh, 96.95 right now about to break the 97 handle and gold is down four dollars and seventy cents at 1292.80 after hitting 1297.60 in pre-market and silver is at 17 dollars and 61 cents down about 10 cents net gas has come roaring back a little bit. It's at three dollars and eight cents. All right, you guys, this is a uh, pretty much a do or die moment. All right, um, our precious BTSC finished at eleven cents yesterday after hitting twenty cents. So that was a pretty much of a whopper of a pullback. You can see it here in the four-hour chart, and you can see it here on the one-hour chart. The thing to note, which gives me a little bit of hope, is that we spiked below the momentum line, but bounced right back and managed to uh, close, you know, right there, on, right there on it for the most part, slightly above it on the daily chart. Weekly chart is more pronounced. You can see the spike down and then the rally back, so we didn't close below that. Again, as long as we don't close below eight cents. Uh, we maintain momentum uh, in this particular market, and it should continue to jump up because Bitcoin is flirting with that uh, 3,000 mark. Other things of note, AMD did not disappoint, got back above the $12 handle yesterday, as you can see, after taking a dive to the $10 handle. So this is good, closed above resistance. This is setting the stage for further run to get us inside the Kumo cloud and then possibly the 13. Can we cross our fingers and see a 13 this week? Probably not, but hey, it would be great to see that. Should be able to maintain its momentum as long as we can stay above $11.40. I don't like the weekly downtrend channel here, but we'll cross our fingers and see if we can break this channel. It would be a bullish sign, a really strong bullish sign if advanced micro devices can close above $11.80 this week. That would be a very positive sign and give us the momentum we need going into next week. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. All right, looking at my gen, uh, let's see here. All right, on the my gen, nice pop yesterday. Let's see what we need to do here. All right, I'll put it in the big picture so we can get a better understanding on it. All right, so you can see here, too, it's right there about that resistance. We just really, 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 really 
need this thing to give us a close above 2211. We close above 2211, that's a strong bullish sign to get us a run, a possible run to the top side of the Kumo cloud. And that will be great over the next couple of weeks. But all we really need is a close above $20.84 to give us the carryover momentum needed for next week to really uh, add to the um, to the rally here. All right, looking at gold futures. People are already starting to say double top, possible double top. Here's a weekly chart. We topped out at the 1297 handle. Here we got up to 1298. What do we need to do? Well, technically speaking, we definitely need to close above uh, this 12, at least 12, what, 90-ish, something like that. I'm going to say 90-ish. Yeah. I'll call it 1292.70 is where we are now. We got to close above 1286 for sure. And really, I would like to see us close above the 1297.40. So where we are now would be positive, and we could get a continuation and break this high. And we wouldn't have a double top. So far, we're, we're doing it so far. However, if we fail here this week to close above, here are, here's the categories. Got to definitely close above 1286, hands down. Got to close above 1286. No if ands, or buts about it. Failure to close above 1286 is a double top, period. A close above 1286 is going to be the momentum line to carry over the rally into next week. The best close will be a close above 1297.40. All right, that strong carryover and that helps us into well into the pulse wave cycle. All right, because right now we are pulse waving. This will really help. And then we can make a run toward the pointer back here that was made on the week of November the 7th of 2016. And that's a run toward the 1338 highs. I believe, all things being equal, just looking at where we are right now, I believe that this is exactly where the market wants to go. The market wants to make a run for the pointer. Pointers are like gaps. They have to be reconciled at some point. I do believe that now is that point. All right. Pointer, market, pointer, market. I think we run here. All right. Okay. Let's look at our notables now. All right. Rally alerts of note. Dry ships. Dry ships has a rally alert. Well, what do you know about that? Good old dry ships has a rally alert. Take note of that pulse wave price trigger. All right. Um, here's one. Hashing space, ticker HSHS, which is on uh, your pink sheet over the counter market. It also has a rally alert. That will be neat. You see that thing take off like a rocket. Nugget has a rally alert. Nugget, you burned me. I'm not interested in you and what you have to say anymore. Um, I'm ignoring you. We're not speaking right now. We're not on talking terms because you burned me. All right. So how about that? All right. Uh, silver, the junior silver miner, SILJ, has a rally alert on it. Notice your pulse wave price trigger on that one. That one's looking rather sexy. Um, you guys is trying to draw me back in with the rally alert. Notice that one as well. 
And UNG also has a rally alert, also trying to suck me back in. USO also has a rally alert. And then we have a oversold and the spider S&P Global Natural Resource at GNR, ticker symbol. So those are the ones of note. IBM has a swing trade alert though. So that's interesting also. And IBM is a major player in the uh, crypto space, as well as um, helping to build out and provide infrastructure for the blockchain technology. All right. And that's public record. That is not inside information. Other notables. We have some institutional moving, buying, accumulation in Facebook and in the British pound sterling under the guise of ticker FXB. Also, the NASDAQ itself, ticker symbol NDAQ, who is also a big player in the infrastructure, um, blockchain technology space, Bitcoin space. Um, we do have uh, some institutional movement there on the buy side. Also, OIH has some institutional influence in it and XBI. So take notes of those people. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, let's see here. Now let's go over some other things here real quick. Things of note. Uh, let me just go through my list here. Uh, your Ethereum is still locked into a parabolic state, um, and the momentum is also locked in on that as well. So take note of that one. As far as Bitcoin, let's see here. Same thing, locked in. I don't see any end in sight. And let's see what else we got. All right, we got a crash alert on U.S. Steel. <laughs> it's been locked in ever since it dropped from the $40 handle down to the $20 handle. And the shorts are still locked in on that one. All right, so that's all I got for now. So happy hunting. Um, the I'm still holding on the ones I posted in the trading room. I'm still holding those. Nothing unusual there. And that's it. So not a lot to talk about. It's been kind of quiet. So we're just going to watch and see. Gold is the thing that we're really watching hardcore today. Is the, uh, Are the central banks going to come in and smash it, or are we going to move on from here? So we're going to wait and see. All right, that's all I got. Um, I got to gotta run. So if you guys have any questions, we can knock them out real quick. All right, let's see. You said knack. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I see NAC. All right. And the system does show a crash alert on it. But yeah, it has a crash alert and it's still locked in in that downtrend. But technically speaking, according to the system, it likes buying the pullback today. So take a look at that pulse wave price trigger. It likes buying the pullback today. So. That's all I got to say on that one. And you use your use your tight stops. All right, you said TMR on the daily. Let's see. TMR. Yep, Toronto has a rally alert today. Um. You, you are locked in on this retracement off the lows on this one. And, um, yeah, if you're going to if you're going to get long, use the recommended stop on the sheet today to protect yourself. If you're already into it, then you're going to, like I say, you want to tighten up that stop. Make sure that your stop is at least. 
where today's recommended stop is. All right. Not lower. It should it should be exactly where today's stop. If today's stop is higher than your stop, you're gonna to want to tighten it up. All right. So tighten this one up. And that's a and that's a definite on this one. Because this one is showing that it's um like I said, it's, it's been in retracement off the lows, but we don't know how much it's going to continue. So, all right. Anybody else have anything else to look at? All right. If not, I will see you guys over into the chat room once I can figure out what's going on and why it's locking me out. All right, peoples. Remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. I'll see you over in the trading room at some point. <laughs> Peace.